Hi, and welcome to lesson 13.3 on making predictions with theoretical probability. And that is what our essential question is. How do you make predictions with theoretical probability? Well, using theoretical probability to make a quantitative prediction. You can make quantitative predictions based on theoretical probability, just as you did with experimental probability earlier in the previous lesson. Our example one, you roll a standard number cube 150 times. Predict how many times you will roll a three or a four. Well, what's the probability of rolling a three or a four? Well, there's two of those options. So that's two out of the six sides, and that simplifies to one third. So we'll set up a proportion. Using that one third, one out of three is how many times? So it can happen theoretically one time out of three times when you uh, roll a three or a four. So how many times would it happen out of 150? What you could do is you could see that three times 50 is 150. So you have to multiply one times 50 is 50. So that is our answer, 50 times out of 150. So x is 50. You could also cross multiply. And you could take uh, 150 times 1 is 150. OK, that's a bad 5. And then you divide by 3. And that is still 50. OK. Method 2. So that's one way of doing it. And the second way of doing it, you could set up an equation. The probability of rolling a 3 or 4 times the number of events gives you your prediction. So that still, it's that one third, one third uh, times the number of events. So one third times 150. And when you multiply one third times 150, that's 150 over 1. And then you multiply across. 150 times 1 is 150, and 3 times 1 is 3. And here is that exact same thing that I showed you up above you get 50. So you can expect to roll a 3 or 4 about 50 times out of 150 trials. Okay. Part B. Cecilia volunteers at her local animal shelter. She has an equally likely chance of being assigned to the dog, cat, bird, or reptile section. Remember it's important that you have an equally likely chance for this to work in order to do this type of probability. If she volunteers 24 times, about how many times should she expect to be assigned to the dog section? Let's set up a proportion. The probability to be assigned to dog section is 1 out of 4 because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 different sections. So there you go. So if it's 1 out of 4, you're expected. So how many times out of the 24 times uh, that she volunteers would it happen? See, because it's 24 is right there. And we would see that 4 times 6 is 24, so you multiply 1 times 6, and you get 6. And you could solve proportions by cross-multiplying and dividing as well, as I showed you earlier. So she can expect, Cecilia can, uh, Celia, sorry, can expect to be assigned to the dog section about 6 times out of 24. All right, here's the your turn questions. Predict how many times you will roll a number less than 5 if you roll a standard number cube 250 times. Let's see, a number less than five. The numbers less than five are one, two, three, and four. There's four numbers, so that's why I have the four there. Not because of just the number four, but because I have four opportunities to get less than five out of a total of six sides in the number cube. And I multiply that by 250. Four times 250 is 1,000 over six. And when I divide this, I get exactly 166.6 repeating. And I just rounded that to 167 times. Next, you flip a fair coin, which really, you just flip a coin. Fair coin means both sides have equal weight. Uh, 18 times, about how many times would you expect heads to appear? Well, you would expect it to happen half the time. But I went ahead and just formally did 1 half times 18. 1 times 18 is 18 over 2, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. So that I expected to happen 9 times. Using theoretical probability to make a qualitative prediction. Earlier, you learned how to make predictions with experimental probability. You can use theoretical probabilities in the same way to help you predict or compare how likely events are. Okay, so we have this and our qualitative predictions. So using values here. Herschel pulls a sock out of his drawer without looking and puts it on. The sock is black. There are seven black socks, eight white socks, and five striped socks left in the drawer. He pulls out a second sock without looking. Is it likely he will be wearing matching socks to school? 
Well, let's find the theoretical probability that Herschel picks a matching sock and the probability that he picks one that does not match. So the probability of getting a matching sock, there's 7 out of the 20. If we add uh, 7 plus 8 plus 5, that is 20. So matching, there are 7 out of the 20. Not matching, well, that's our complement. Remember, the complement is uh, everything that's not that. So I, I think of it as uh, 7 out of 20 uh, are matching, and the other 13 are not, because 7 plus 13 gives you all 20 of the socks in our um, sample space. And that equals 1. So what they're talking about is, okay, all of them, all the socks minus that the seven that are the black ones is the rest of them. The probability that Herschel picks a matching sock is about half the probability he picks one uh, that he picks one that does not match. So that thirteen twentieths is about half of that because fourteen twentieths would be half of seven twentieths. It is likely he will not be wearing matching socks to school. I mean, look at this. There's 13 to choose from, and there's only seven that match. So there you go. The probability that Herschel picks a matching sock is about half. The, uh, it is likely, yeah, I just read that. Part B, if 2,000 customers at a gym are randomly assigned a three-digit security code that they use to access their online accounts. The codes are made up of the digits 0 through 4, and the digits can be repeated. Is it likely that fewer than 10 customers are issued the code 103? Okay. So, first we have to figure out how many uh, possible codes are there. And there are three of them mentioned 0 through 4. So, 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So, there are five different digits. And if I multiply, and there's three of them, so if I have 5 times 5 times 5, that is 125. That tells me how many codes are possible when there are three digits and there's the number 0 through 4. And so we can set up a proportion. There's 125, and we're looking for the exact one code that is 103. So how many 103s are there? There's only one of them out of 125 possible codes that we could make. So that equates to how many customers out of the 2,000 customers that are at the gym. So we have a proportion here. 125 times 16 is 2,000. Multiply that 1 times 16 and you get 16. So it is not likely that 10 of the customers get the same code. Is more likely that 16 members get the code that is 103. And uh, by the way, you could, to get 16, you could have 2,000 divided by 125, and that would get you 16 as well. Okay, a couple of your turn questions. A bag of marbles contains eight red marbles, four blue, and five white. Tom picks a marble at random. It's more. Is it more likely that he picks a red marble or a marble of another color? Well, what we could do is we can see that there's eight red, and there's nine. I mean, that, that's super simple. There's eight that are red, and there's eight that are another color. So, looks like, yeah, it's more likely he's going to pick a marble of another color. I mean, we don't even have to do any complicated math here. There's just more of them that are not red. There you go. Number four. At a fundraiser, a group charges $6 for tickets for a grab bag. You choose one bill at random from a bag that contains 40 $1 bills, 20 $5 bills, 5 $10 bills, 5 $20 bills, and one $100 bill. Is it likely you will win enough money to pay for your ticket? Well, let's see. We have a fundraiser that charges $6. So, you, so we're looking at, can you pick one of these? Is it likely that you'll win enough uh, at least 6 bucks? Well, how many bills do we have? We have 40, uh, 60, uh, 65, 70, 
71 so there's 71 right there and uh, and we can get the five ten dollar bills so there's five of those that will pay that'll cover the six dollars that we paid uh, there are also five ten dollar five ten dollar bills five twenty dollar bills so five twenty dollar bills and the hundred dollar bill that'll cover it as well so there are a total of eleven uh, prizes that will cover our cost uh, 11 out of the 71 bills that are there now is it likely no you would need to pick a 10 uh, uh, 20 or 100 dollar bill and just 11 out of 21 that 11 out of 71 that is not so good and if I had 11 divided by 71 I mean let's look at our chances here if I have uh, 11 divided by 71 I only have a 15% chance not see point 15 is 15 percent not so good and so that is what you need to know about making predictions with theoretical probability thank you for watching thanks for watching